gotta love the guitar on that. Uh, just like a Joe Satriani type of thing. But yeah, here we go. Hey guys. Back to you with another video. I'm going to do something a little different today. I'm going to look at something that you don't normally talk about or hear from other YouTubers. And that is something that noobs could utilize. Uh, how do you approach each match? What do you look at? What are the different components that can affect the outcome? It's all very important. But there's not a lot of emphasis about there, out there about that. So, starting. The first thing I do is I look at the sortie's own composition. Look at your own flight mission, people that are your allies. Note the number of bombers you might have, the fighters, the attack aircraft, the types. Those are very important things to consider when you're going out on a mission. It may seem uh, minuscule during your early days of War Thunder, but as you play more and more, you'll realize that these teammates can determine the outcome of a match and determine whether you live or die. If they live and die, or live or die very quickly, uh, it can change what you're up against. So it's really important. Second thing you want to look at is uh, your opposition's nations. Uh, it doesn't apply much to top tier because we seem to have mixed battles. But, you know, the lower tiers rank 1 to 4. You generally are up against a single nation or Axis versus allies, etc. Uh, so you want to take a look at that. It'll help you determine the type of aircraft you're likely to face. Um, so you want to kind of look at that and compare the sortie BR rating uh, versus what you may face from your opposition. So if you're, if you notice on your team that you have a range of uh, five BR to six. You could kind of estimate that the same is going to be present on the opposition. Uh, so that could help you determine what you're going to be up against. Uh, the second thing, or third thing that I look at is the map itself. You know, do you have a short map or is it a large map? I mean, large maps will allow you to get to altitude faster if that's your strength. Uh, and, and, you know, in late game, then large maps can be beneficial. But if you have only good climbing for up to a certain altitude, such as a lot of the Russian planes in early tiers, uh, shorter maps are more helpful for you. So, you know, keep an eye out on what the size of the map and how likely and soon you are to engage the enemy after you take off. That's really important. Uh, Kind of related is whether or not you start with an air span or, or geez, an air spawn or a no air spawn. There's some maps that are pretty close together, like Rur, that have an air spawn, and you're likely to meet, you know, within minutes. Uh, uh, the other side of that is you can have an air spawn where you have a large map. I think Norway is one of those that come to mind. Uh, so even though you do get an air spawn, it is a large map, and so you will take a lot of time before you see the opposition. So keep that in mind. You also want to look at where the typical hot spots for each map are going to be as far as action. Uh, if you really are in a boom and zoomer, uh, you're not really apt at turn fighting. Getting in the fur ball is not a good idea. Um, you know, maybe you want to stay on the edge of those hot spots and not necessarily in the middle of them. Uh, the other and final thing I would say is you have to really consider the geography and weather of the map. It's not always evident. At least the weather is not always evident during the map phase when you start up. But uh, if you take you pay attention, you can probably see at least whether it's a day or night map, etc. And the reason why I say all this is because 
when you're on the deck, um, your altitude for takeoff is important. I'm on a map right here playing this game. Uh, I know I'm not really showing much content other than just a gameplay. But this map is showcasing a map where you kind of start at a higher altitude. I believe it's around 1,800 meters. So your performance is already limited at this altitude. And that could have an effect on your game. So keep that in mind. Obviously the uh, cloud cover is going to make a, uh, an effect on you. You want to know, you know, about, you're not going to know until you get in the match, but you're not, I mean, it's going to affect, you know, when you see people. Um, so keep that in mind, at least. If it's low cloud cover and you're in a plane that doesn't perform well at high altitude, you may want to stay in that mid-range and kind of pick off players as you see them. I, I mean, it's just something to think about. I'm not going to tell you how to play that. Not an expert. Uh, just, just something that I consider when I'm going out on a sortie. Um, another thing that a lot of people don't realize, though, is that weather and altitude affect your aircraft performance, especially when you're talking about manual engine controls, etc. That's another topic entirely. Uh, but your per compressor stage changes can be affected by the altitude, and that weather affects the, altitude, uh, the pressure. So, when you're using, uh, you're going to change the stage in a hot map, maybe lower than a cold map, for example. Uh, it's not much of a change usually, usually it's just by a few hundred meters. But it could, you know, give you a little extra boost. Uh, fuel mixtures and all that, uh, I'm not very good at understanding a lot of the fuel mixtures. I don't think they're modeled well in War Thunder. Some people say that they are and they do affect certain planes, but I don't have enough experience to say one way or another. I'm just putting it here for completeness. Um, that's all I really have to say about fuel mixture. I just don't know enough about it to give you any advice. It's just I hear that it has some effect. Um... That's really most of what I look at when I'm entering a battle. Um, at least it's something that could help you figure out a different way to approach the game. Uh, I, I may have missed on something. I'll, you know, if you have any other advice that you want to throw in here for this video, maybe I could follow up with a part two. But uh, this is a good starting point, at least for all the noobs or for anybody that's actually played a while and just don't play a lot and, and have something else to think about. Alright. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed and we'll see you next time. <laughs>